This is Michael Dixon, a resident of Hamilton, a city in Ontario, Canada. He is suspected of robbing a jewelry store and is hence arrested and brought in for questioning. However, according to witness reports, the suspect description is that of a white man. Hence, Michael Dixon does not match the suspect description and should not be arrested in the first place. In this video, we will examine how an innocent man conducts himself against an interrogator trying his best to prove that he is guilty. We can see that Michael adopts a rather confident posture. He seems relaxed and is observing his surrounding well. Sorry, keep you waiting, Michael. That's okay. It's been long two days. Uh, this is one of our interview rooms mm -hmm. here at uh, Hamilton Police, and this is audio and videotaped. Yeah, no, it's not. Okay, uh, you're obviously not a stupid man. Uh, video camera, microphones, microphones on the wall. So everything we say and do is recorded. Mm -hmm. That's for both of our benefit. Okay. It benefits everybody. Um, and I'm gonna just discuss the situation with you. Great, okay. Okay, um, before I do that, there's something I have to read to you. The interrogator will proceed to read Michael his rights. Do you wish to call a lawyer right now? No. Again, you already have. Yeah. You've spoken to a lawyer on the telephone. Okay. We understand that Michael has spoken to his lawyer before being interrogated. This is a crucial step to prove your innocence as a lawyer will direct what information should and should not be said. Whether one is guilty or innocent in a case, one should always consult a lawyer before an interrogation. If a lawyer is not provided, refuse to speak and request a lawyer persistently. And you're charged with break and enter. Do you wish to say anything in answer to the charge? You are not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so. But whatever you do say, may be given in evidence. Well, that's fine, because what I have to say is to plead my innocence, so I don't mind that. Being. Okay. But uh, I'm just curious to know, like, how it got this far, because, as I said to you earlier in the other room, the police officers that were stopping me on the street said that they had witnesses, and I... Well, I, in the, you, you wanted to talk to me about the events in the other room, yeah. and I told you that... Uh, that wasn't the right time and place to discuss it, remember right, that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's one other thing I have to tell you before we discuss this, okay? Okay. And that's that if you've spoken to any police officer or to anyone with authority or if any such person has spoken to you in connection with this case, I want it clearly understood that I don't want it to influence you in making any statement. Basically, all I want is, all we're interested in is the truth. Mm -hmm. And if you've had any conversations with any other police officers and they've they've discussed this with you in any way it should have no bearing on what, what the, the conversation that we have okay 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 um, why we're here is because earlier tonight you were arrested for breaking out to a jewelry store on John Street South um, now the, your innocence and guilt in this quite frankly uh, isn't an issue uh, the evidence I have is, fr frankly, conclusive and overwhelming, okay? Um, so I'm not even going to ask you if you did it. What the interrogator said is a complete lie. There is no evidence to prove that Michael is the culprit, even witness accounts and the suspect description says otherwise. The interrogator made that statement to put pressure on Michael, hoping that he will succumb to the pressure and ask for a plea deal. Essentially, if the pressure gets to Michael and Michael says he is guilty, in the eye of the court, he will be guilty. What, I'm, what, what I have to ascertain here is what kind of guy you are. 
Um, whether, whether this is you're like a serial burglar and this is what you're doing all the time or whether this is a, a one-off thing because of the power cut and everything that's going on tonight. Notice how the interrogator already assumes that Michael is guilty. He is now adding severity to his crimes by suspecting that he may have robbed other stores too. This technique may cause certain individuals to break apart and they may say that this is only a one-off thing and they did not commit other crimes. By making this statement, the individual is able to dodge other suspicions. However, he had inadvertently admitted to committing the crime that he is suspected of and hence may be persecuted. That's, that's all we're here for. Um... Okay, I understand your position. Like I yeah. say here, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, and you've heard that a million times that you're in your career, but it's just, ask me questions, that's all I can do is answer them, I guess. Michael remains confident and continues to claim his innocence, he did not fall for the interrogator's trick and is willing to take on more questions. I've got no questions to ask you, I mean, why, why did well, you do it? That's, that's basically, yeah, that's, that's my only question. Coming from that position, and, I'm, and since I'm saying I didn't do it, I really don't have an answer for you except to say I didn't do it. Well, I guess we haven't really got a, really? a, a great amount of talking yeah. about. Yeah, it's, it's like I said, the, whether you did it or not is an up for the discussion. Okay, well. Um, it, it's really not. There's a number, a number of witnesses. Great. One of whom had a video camera. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, yeah, then. Well, that's that. relieving. That's so, relieving, to be quite honest. Yeah. So view the video camera. I have. Okay. That's why your guilt isn't in the, in an issue here. That doesn't even make sense to me, because if I'm on the video camera. That doesn't make sense. You have a video camera that shows me? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. It makes perfect sense to me. The interrogator lied about having video evidence of his crime. However, Michael, knowing that he did not do it, is unwilling to let the interrogator have the upper hand and questions the authenticity of the evidence. Uh, we'll have to, I guess, I have no choice but to get a lawyer then, if this is the kind of thing you're going to well, go through is, with me. This, I isn't mean, go, this isn't going to go away. You're, you're charged with breaking and You will be charged tonight. That. Okay. You will be going to court in the morning, uh, charged with breaking and with intent. Okay, that, that's, that's what's going to happen right now. The interrogator now lies that Michael will be charged in court for a crime he did not commit. If Michael had fallen for this trick, the interrogator will then proceed to offer a plea deal which essentially makes Michael guilty in the eye of the law. However, we will soon see that Michael is able to see through the interrogator's trick and calls him out on it. Can I ask you something? Okay, are you just making this up that you have a video camera so you see how I react? Because it goes that if you're saying, okay, let me up for a sec, please. If I am guilty, as you believe, because you had me on video camera, then okay, we'll go through the procedure. But I'm saying, I, I, you know, trying to call your bluff here because since I know I didn't do it, there's no way I can be on the video camera. Well, like I say, it's, just not, so game, it's not game of poker. Okay. Well, I've, got, I've got nothing to gain from that. I'm not trying to give you a hard time, all right? You know what? I've got nothing to gain from that either way, um, which is why I'm not asking you, did you do it? I'm not trying to catch you out. I've got nothing to gain from that. Okay. Well, I'm here to ask, do whatever you want to do. The circum I mean, the circumstances are that uh, three people who live across the street saw you uh, hiding in the doorway there, pulling the glass out, breaking the glass. When the police officers, the two uniform officers who uh, arrested you, pulled mm -hmm. up across the street from you, they saw you run off down the alleyway, and then they described the police officer who arrested you chasing you on foot. And that police officer then arrested you around the corner. The interrogator remains adamant about using the same trick of lying about the evidence. However, Michael has already seen through this trick and continues to question the validity of the information. So, this police officer recognizes me in green shorts and white t-shirt with a knapsack? The witness, all of the witnesses, saw you running from the store, being chased by the police officer who arrested you. Oh no. 
when did yeah. this take place? Like, how long before when uh, I was arrested? Like, he ran immediately before seconds. Well, this isn't me. That's what I'm telling you. Okay, that's fine. Do, do you own a bicycle? No, I, not in, not here in Toronto. I do. Yes. Where do you live? Nine, in here, Hamilton, Nine Delaware. The interrogator, knowing that he cannot break through Michael's defense, began to stutter and slowly loses his confidence. He proceeds to ask simpler questions to divert attention from his previous failed attempts. How long have you lived there? Uh, I moved in August, you know, August. Right. When in August? On oh, what date? I, yeah. I, I bought the house in April, April 30th and I didn't move in until August. The interrogator continues to ask simple questions about his residence and such before he regains his confidence to challenge his innocence again. What happened when you were arrested by the officer? Oh, well, I, I could see figures, but it's dark, right? And and I could sense, like, that person's coming towards me. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? And then the flashlight came up, and I thought this, and then there's more than one voice, and I thought, something's up here. And then, they didn't identify themselves as police officers, but I... Well, they were in uniform. In the dark, yes. And so then, behind flashlights. So my point is, I cannot tell who's behind a flashlight. And then I could, but I could see a weapon. And, uh, and I was kind of like, they're saying, get down, ground. I'm kind of like, uh, okay, like, cooperate. And then I'm thinking, I don't know the police officers. And I, I said as such, like, who are you? Are you, are you police? And he's like, like, what do you think? as a response and I got on the ground and I was like police so where, all around me where, where, where exactly were you when you were arrested Major, let's, can we do it on the board here sure. how's that Want me to do? you set up exhibits you're probably more artistic than me Michael recalls the location of his arrest and the direction where police officers approached him Like I said, on the information that I've got, you, you're going to be charged tonight with breaking in. Uh -huh. However, I do have a duty to make sure that the truth uh -huh. is and the truth. Basically, the truth is paramount, and the true the true version uh -huh. of events is paramount. And I have a duty um, to investigate all of this, and I will investigate. Okay. I assure you, I'll investigate this story thoroughly. Uh -huh. Michael may have possibly picked out a contradiction in the interrogator's statement as the interrogator claimed to have incriminating evidence despite having not investigated the incident thoroughly. And uh, hopefully, um, I'll be able to find something here right. which will either prove or disprove mm -hmm. okay. the, 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 you know, what we've discussed tonight. Yeah. Okay? The problem is the speed at which this is going. Yeah. You know, like when I was on the ground, I was saying, go quickly to the terminal I have like six or so guys around me you know like talk to the bus driver right. you know like I like I can't I mean I can't comment on things that okay I know unfortunately but, um, but now I'm I'm left kind of, hanging right now I'm know? looking at this I mean this is the basically on the evidence I've got this is the only course of events that uh, can take place right now but I, I will certainly make sure that this is looked into thoroughly okay, uh, okay. I, I can give you my word on that that's my duty. That's that's what I have to okay, do. I trust you will. Okay. But I'm just saying, it's a shame that I don't even know where I'm staying tonight. Like what horrors are ahead of me. But I mean, this is okay. Just been fortunate. Wait, wait me a second. I just have to uh, check on one thing. Okay. Wait a second. The interrogator left the room and came back with another piece of evidence. One thing that's. Uh, one thing that's come to life. When you were arrested, you had uh, an, an object in your hand. A ratchet, yeah. Can, can you tell me about that? It was in my pocket, and to be quite honest, I was thinking I should have something in my hand <laughs> because I was walking home, which doesn't sound very nice, but that's the why it's there. I'm not and, criticizing you for that. And that's it. Okay, that's, so that's a tool I use at use. That's like a quite common. Okay. I even have spares in my bag, you know. So. Okay. So when That's you're, the reason. Yeah. So when the officer approached you, I had it in my hand. You had a ratchet, yeah. and it's just. A tool. Was it like an Allen key? Yeah, thing? there's a like, like a, a corner key, socket ratchet. 
Exactly. What I have at work, we have aluminum, uh, I think of it as a big erector set. We build frames and stuff that have a lock and it's a ratchet and sometimes corners are like 45, you need that corner key. I understand that. Anyways, that's the tool and that's why I had it in my hand. The interrogator eventually gives up on trying to prove that Michael is the culprit. They went on to discuss whether Michael will be in custody and court details. Michael stayed in jail for three nights and had a curfew for nine months until all the charges are eventually dropped. With the dropping of the charge, Michael is officially innocent. He had won this case. Michael went on to sue the county police and received over 100,000 in damages. If you are interested in more videos of these kinds, do subscribe to my channel. Thank you.